Starfield is out and it only has AMD FSR. Noticeably missing is DLSS, but of course there are mods that add DLSS and XESS support into Starfield. This is crazy and in this video I'll show you exactly how to get it installed, running and set up in game so you can get better performance using a Nvidia DLSS or Intel XESS in Starfield. This is of course a mod, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't disable achievements, so it should be more than safe to use. There are two options, one of them which includes reshade, so if you install that you can also get to customizing how the game looks further than just adding a DLSS, but that's for a separate video. For now, this there's a few downloads and file preparations that we need to get done. First of all, we need to download the Starfield Upscaler from Nexus Mods. In the description down below, you'll find this link here titled Starfield Upscaler. What we need to do is head across to the Files tab here, then scroll down and we'll have two options, one that includes Reshade and one that doesn't. If you'd like Reshade, which includes CAS sharpening, it might conflict with the Steam overlay, but most of the time it should work fine. If you wouldn't like to download it with Reshade, you can download this second one here. I'll download it with so we can customize it in game. I'll click Manual Download here. Then, if you haven't already logged in, you'll need to create an account and log in sadly. Once you've signed in, we can start the download again and click slow download to get this zip. Then we'll save this and open it and we'll have all of these files here. What we need to do is drop these into the Starfield folder. So navigate across to where it's installed or open up Steam, then select Starfield, right click, manage and browse local files. Then inside of here is where we'll drop all of these files. So drag and drop. Just like that, we've now set up this mod, but there's still a few steps in order to get this working. Now what we need to do is download the Upscaler Base plugin. So heading across to the next link, Upscaler Base plugin, once again scroll down, manual download, and click slow download. After we save and open the file, we'll have this folder here, and inside of it, pdperf plugin. What we need to do is extract this entire folder, so this one here, into the mods folder here. So we'll drag it and place it here. Just like that, it'll merge with the existing one, and there's our pdperf plugin .dll. Cool. Now for the final download for this, we'll need to download the actual DLSS DLL file. Usually downloading DLL files is a terrible idea, but for this it should be safe. We're downloading DLSS 3.5, but I'm pretty sure you can download other versions here. While DLSS 3 is known for frame generation, currently this isn't supported as a mod as far as I understand. This is only for upscaling and getting a much better looking game with a much better performance cost. So we'll download NVGX DLSS. 350.zip, choose any server here to download it from, and we'll open the zip when it's done. Now we should have nvgx.dlss. This file will place once again into the Starfield Mods Upscaler Base Plugin folder. Now you can see pdperf and nvgx. We can close the zip and inside of this folder here, you'll find an upscaler configuration file. What we can do is change the type here from DLSS, FSR2, XESS, and DLAA by changing the type here, enabling sharpening and choosing the percent here, and scrolling down, we can choose a preset for how it runs. We can customize all of these in game, assuming you have the reshade plugin installed. Otherwise, if you don't, this is where you'll need to customize how these work. We can also toggle DLSS and toggle the DLSS menu using these two key codes. Here's a link to decipher them. 611 is keypad divide, so the divide key on your numpad, and 520 is the end key. Now that we've successfully installed DLSS and customized it, assuming you don't have reshade, we need to launch up the actual game itself, disable FSR, and see the difference. At the very top of my screen, you can see reshade, telling us to press the home button to configure reshade, and here we have a ton of options. We can head to the add-on screen to customize depth of field, and we should see here the Starfield Upscaler, which is installed. We have settings, logs, statistics, about, etc. How exactly does this work in game? Well, simply hit the end key and you should see this new window pop up. We can enable or disable here, change the upscaler type, which is currently just DLSS, change the sharpness level and choose a preset. 
By default, it'll be F. If we pull up the configuration file, starfieldupscaler.ini, we can see exactly what these presets are. As for what they really do, I'm not entirely sure, but the default is 6, and that's probably what we should leave it at. So I'll let you ponder this to see if you'll find some kind of a difference. Personally, I don't find much of a difference between these options, but we'll close this and head back to the game. So first of all, we'll disable this by clicking Enable. We'll hit N to hide it, and we'll head into the in-game settings, Display, and we'll make sure that upscaling is turned to off instead of FSR2. Now we can get a baseline for native performance. We'll load into the game while we're in the game, running at native resolution. We can hit home to bring up the statistics for the game, and apparently we're running at 60 FPS. It definitely feels like 60. Unfortunately, as the overlay is disabled, I'm not able to pull up an FPS counter. However, using external software, you can see that I'm currently sitting at around 60 FPS with pretty good averages, a low of about 30 FPS. This can be improved, of course, by enabling FSR, for example. Also, you saw some shimmery things in the background. We'll run FSR at 100% dynamic resolution, so we're running at native resolution here. Things look great, obviously, as we're basically upscaling from what we had of 100. If we look around, things are still pretty similar, and if we capture our FPS and look at the latest graph, you can see we're now running at 56 FPS instead of 60 FPS. So a small drop in FPS, obviously, as we're rendering an art at 100% and doing some extra processing on top of that. That's not really how you're going to be playing this game, though. Instead, what you'll usually have is display the render resolution set down to maybe 75%, which I think is the default. Looking around, once again, things are still pretty good. They look okay, and obviously the scene is going to be relatively cherry-picked. There are different places that you'll notice more difference. Having a look at the capture, our FPS went from 56 all the way up to 67. This is obviously better than running at native resolution at 60, as of course, we're now rendering the game at 75% resolution resolution and upscaling. All of the lows in FPS have improved as well. Obviously, once again, we're running it at a lower resolution. Now, let's try actually using a DLSS. You can, of course, enable it while we're still in game here, and it'll try and work its magic on top of everything else, but you won't really notice a difference other than extra improvement as we're running both FSR and DLSS. Notice these barriers in the distance, they're kind of shimmering and aliased. This is with FSR enabled, but if we enable DLSS as well, that shimmering is now gone. Crazy. We're doing tons of post-processing on this, so our FPS is probably going to be a bit worse. I'll hit my capture key and capture for just a few seconds, and we're now running at 66.8 FPS, which is actually better than native resolution by 10 FPS on a 3080 Ti. On lower powered systems, this is obviously going to be extrapolated. So, from this really good quality here, with both FSR and DLSS running to native resolution, which actually looks a little bit worse, there's an improvement of 10 FPS. Once again, FSR2, there's still a little bit of shimmering to native, where there's tons of shimmering, we actually gain 10 FPS while making the game look much, much better. And here's FSR2, for example. There's some noticeable shimmering in the background, so running DLSS and AMD FSR is really good for image quality, but of course that's not how this mod is intended. You could use it that way, nobody's gonna stop you. Instead, what we're supposed to do is head into Settings, followed by Display, and make sure that upscaling is set to CAS. This option basically only has sharpening with it, but we can lower the resolution scale here. If it's turned off, we can't change the resolution scale, so it needs to be set to CAS. Then we can leave the scale at maybe 75%, and for this, if we head back and into the game, we're now running at 75% resolution with no upscaling. Our FPS should obviously be a bit better now, and that is reflected. 60-ish FPS. It's okay. So let's actually enable DLSS. I'll pause, hit end, and enable DLSS here. So with resolution scale set to 75, CAS, and DLSS enabled, you can now see how the game looks. It's a huge improvement over FSR in most situations. As for FPS, let's have a look at that. Running just DLSS in Starfield, we're now at 67 FPS with a FPS low of 61. This is a huge improvement and actually really, really good. So if you're a fan of performance and how DLSS looks compared to FSR, this is a great option for you. If you're a crazy person, you could use both FSR and DLSS for not only a huge visual improvement, but also an FPS improvement. Here's FSR and DLSS. Here's just FSR. 
Anyways, it's really up to your preference. It's a rather complicated video. I'm not really going to dive into the different presets as I don't see much of a difference, but you're now able to use DLSS, at least unofficially, in Starfield. So that's huge. Oh, and if you're wondering, you can actually use other DLSS versions like 2.5.1. Once again, from Tech Power Up, we can instead scroll down or search for 2.5.1, which is as far as I hear the most compatible version. We'll download it from any server and once again, open it to extract it into the upscaler base folder here. I'll move this one out to my desktop for now and place 2.5 in here. Let's see what kind of performance we get with that. So once again, loading back in, things look pretty good with FSR, but keeping it at 75% and disabling FSR as such, we'll go from this native 75% resolution to DLSS 2.5, also a huge improvement. Now, whether DLSS 3 or 2.5 works better for you, that's really up to your system and your preferences. Not to mention, there's other options here, such as presets B, C, and D, which is, I think, ultra quality, quality, and performance or at least something along those lines. I'm not entirely sure. They're written down as being different in the config file, but honestly, I don't see a difference between them. Oh, and I completely forgot about this. I went back and ran a DLSS 2.5 performance benchmark at 75% rent resolution, and we're sitting at 84 FPS. That's crazy. That's higher than every other benchmark that I've got here by a huge amount. We sat at around 50 to 60 with all of these options, but now with DLSS 2.5, 5.1 was sitting at 84 on average with no other settings changed. That is huge. I actually didn't think that 2.5.1 would give us better performance while in game, but it actually does. As for looks, it's debatable. DLSS 3.5 should be better, but the main shtick about that is frame generation. And of course, that isn't supported here as it's not an official integration with it. But wow, is this a huge improvement? So would I recommend using 2.5.1 over 3.5? Yes, yes, I absolutely would. Hopefully you're sticking around till the end of this video because wow, that is a huge change. Anyways, that's really about it for this super quick guide. So hopefully you find it useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.